Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 35. It's vacuum bagged e-glass and epoxy on a plastic honeycomb core. And this is what the panel looks like. The core is polypropylene with a face sheet on it. You laminate on both sides. Only a little bit of the resin goes into the core. There's a 12 ounce and a 6 ounce e-glass ply on each face and the epoxy is a 5 to 1 and here, something I like to do, doing a wet layup, just to make sure I've got everything sorted before I go mixing the resin. Putting the bag down and then stacking everything in reverse. And it's a little fussy, but it makes a big difference if you're doing something bigger or more complicated, where you need to be prepared. If you need to stop in the middle and go cut something, I could waste a lot of your open time and just throw you off. Because time tends to slow down and mess with you when you're doing wet resin things. So set that aside and everything will be ready for you right in the order you need it. Here's the resin. This is a 5 to 1 total boat epoxy. It's been around a little bit. There's some color to the hardener. It'll just make it easier to see uh, what's going on and how much goes in the cells of the honeycomb. And I'm going to put a coat of peel ply, a ply of peel ply, uh, against the tool here. And it's just sort of to show what it looks like. And mess with it. This is a nylon uncoated plain old peel ply and um, this would be a nice way to see what that surface looks like. If you're going to make panels and glue them together it's nice sometimes to have peel ply surface on both sides. And the first ply here is a six ounce woven e-glass. Now wet through that put a little, uh, little more epoxy than might be necessary. And I got this wet out roller. It's stuck rolls a little and then stops and it's super frustrating it makes it a mess of the surface and so it's always good to clean these and uh, having one that rolls nice and smoothly it's way less frustrating it does a much nicer job so here goes the biaxial 12 ounce e-glass it's been right on the end of a roll wrapped tight around the cardboard so it's pretty boardy and uh, it doesn't like to go flat but if resin doesn't take care of it, the vacuum bag will. I'm going to put a little more resin on this bottom skin than might be ideal, just because I'm not sure how it's going to work. You can see it wet out here slowly, the spit up. Pretty much what it takes is time rolling and resin. And you can't really rush it. If you don't get it wet out, then the vacuum bag is certainly not going to make it that much wetter. It's not going to get you're going to put extra resin in with the vacuum bag. Uh, and here's the honeycomb. You can see the big cells on the edge and the scrim bonded to the surface. I'm going to coat this with just a little bit of resin. I'm not really sure it's even necessary, but it's something that I pretty much always want to coat two surfaces that are bonded, getting bonded together with very few exceptions, just to make sure that you got resin on both sides but here it probably would work without it just putting a pretty thin layer on there and I'm gonna flop it down and here goes the resin on top another little bit of wetting it out and it turned out a bunch of this resin either came up from the bottom through the scrim uh, or down through the top it doesn't come through holes like foam where resin that on the bottom of the core that overbleeds comes through into the top skin, which is kind of nice because then you can either bleed it off or it, it helps. Uh, here it just goes into the honeycomb cells and hangs out and doesn't do anything. But here's that top ply. It's still pretty dry. I'm going to just trust here that the bag will squish it down and um, wet out that last sheet of e-glass and throw on the peel ply, this is polyester peel ply on this side. And it doesn't look very wet, but if you put a finger down hard on it and you see resin, there's no dry under your finger, it kind of pools in your fingerprint, and that means you've got probably enough. So there's a P3 release film and this breather. Now I've made a bit of a mess off where I was putting my pot on the side there. 
and it's really important to clean up that resin before you go trying to put the bag down because the sealing tape will absolutely not stick to the resin and once you get resin on the sealing tape it's a total mess so here I put down that masking tape around the perimeter just to make sure I have a clean landing zone for the, the sealing tape and in this case it was really useful because even once you've wiped up the resin with acetone or something like that it's still there's residue and it it just makes it awfully frustrating so for my vacuum fitting here it's just a piece of infusion hose with some mesh wrapped around it you can wrap breather around it too I want to make sure to keep that off the part because the bag will definitely push that in and make a mess of your surface here comes the bag a little bit of vacuum pulling it down I'm not going to put too much vacuum on this initially and we'll just get it there and then maybe a little later on I'll bring it up to about 15 inches of mercury which is about halfway just to see what happens but for something like this you typically wouldn't need much vacuum and here it is all laid up uh, it's on a warm table it's about 85 F and I'll just let this sit here until it cures you can see the resin bleed through in a nice pattern and now before I walk away I'm going to clean off my wet out roller so that I don't get what I had when I first started uh, cleaning off the mantle that it rolls on and making sure there's no resin inside the, the barrel of that bubble popping end so coming back the next day here I am I've got a nice bleed on there not too much resin but enough it's uniform and I'm um, going to peel this up and have a look at what we got. Got a wedge under there. Try not to cut myself. And you can see the peel ply on there. And the surface looks pretty nice. Plenty of resin. And here is the trimmed up panel. You can see those dark spots inside are where resin went through into cells. It seems like there was a difference cell to cell in porosity. Uh, some cells got a lot of resin and others didn't, like this one, and I'm not really sure why or how this works. It seems like it's kind of random. Uh, maybe there are small holes, maybe once a little resin goes through, uh, more follows. I'm not sure. I'm going to see if I can figure that out, but you can see in that top surface the dimples of the core. Less vacuum would have made that less pronounced. Uh, it's flatter, but here it's squished pretty well and this bottom an uncoated peel ply you can see it peels off a little harder than that polyester on the surface but leaves a nice finish and there's a little bit of air in there it's not perfect but for a wet layup it's pretty good but there's a lot of uh, that that brown excess resin in those cells so it's a neat way to make a part this core is relatively inexpensive and it's not going to rot and it's very tough and it's pretty easy to use good with a vacuum bag or perhaps better uh, for just an open molded situation where you lay up on each skin and call it good but it's an interesting look at a different kind of material so thank you for checking it out